Welcome to the sticker trade. The great thing about stickers is you can really get up with anything that has an adhesive back. So this one, if you can notice, or if you know what you're looking at, is actually clear. So when you pull back on this, the area that you stick it on, you'll see from behind. So if it's white, this will look like you actually caught a tag on the thing. I thoroughly enjoy stickers that have that black book touch. So this one, he took time to do full color. He used the paint pen for the outline. And then, I'm not sure if you guys are hip to this trick, but ballpoint pens are alcohol solvents. So if you use those for shading, your alcohol-based pen will pick it up, and you can use that to change the color. So let's say you're a baller on a budget, and you only have one, two, three alcohol-based markers, but you have a really sick ballpoint pen, blue, black, you can lay it down, cross hatch it. You can see there's some writing underneath, and you can use your alcohol-based pen to shade with it. Very prison envelope style. This one is super sick. sticker. It's a sticker of a sticker on a butt. But is the sticker actually on the girl's butt and it's a photo? Or is it a photo with the sticker put on it and then made into a sticker? Here's a shadow. The world may never know. Here's another example of how you can take a photo of something that you've done. Here he's been able to use a whole chest of a gal. You can see the collarbone, boobs, and they made a sticker of it. So this is a good example of subliminal messaging where they're trying to use a hard to see typeface. It's, it's hard to see with the camera because focusing on this is a bit of a problem because it's so static but this is supposed to look like it's reflecting light or just uh, almost like uh, what you'd see when you look at a TV when there's no reception you might be able to read it you might not you might think about it later on and be able to realize what it says you'll notice that my fingers are in focus but the typeface is still hard to read this is part of their design aspect the design of this sticker that you're supposed to notice it but not really understand it and hopefully you'll it'll click later on so this is an example of a printing technique used called dot matrix and what that allows you to do is lighter values and darker values without using uh, any kind of fades because in silk screen and printing you can only go through with tiny dots so if you have big dots close together it essentially is a uh, a, a bold color, but if you do a bunch of tiny dots close together, you're able to get the shading, which is what they also use in comic books.
Here's an example of a reverse sticker. So it has a back, a front, and when you pull it off, this side is sticky. So then you apply it again to the next surface, and then you peel it off, and then it sticks. These are great for clear surfaces. Inside of a newspaper bin, or a window that has something blocking it from the inside, like a, like a bar, a bar stool, a bar stand, and you want people to see it from the outside, this is something you would use for that. Here's a goodie from Robots Will Kill. Super old school. Excellent sticker. So here's our homie Batty. He's doing some excellent stickers. You know, we've been cycling through the pack he sent us. But here we've got a really dark value with a dark fill. And you know, if that's aesthetically what you're going for, that's great. But if you want, you know, a little bit of constructive criticism, you might want to pay more attention to your shines just so you pop it out so your letters look juicy and delicious. The point of the shines is to give a little bit more emphasis on the roundness of the letters and uh, just make it look like it's almost like candy. So he kind of chintzed out on those shines there and because the values are so dark of his outline and his fill, everything just kind of gets jarbled together. Pay attention to your shines, pay attention to your low lights, your outline, you know, all of those things are gonna make your letters really stand out and pop. But otherwise, he's killing it. This is a great sticker. Thanks, Batty, for the pen. Great pen to catch tags on. Excellent sticker pen. Black. Perfect. Hello, Joe. This is time. That's okay. We got you. We'll send you some slaps back, homie. I want to talk about this sticker real quickly because it's an example, excellent example of color theory. This is again a color that is, uh, they're complementary colors, red and green. So if you're able to play with one or the other, you're able to do different color schemes. When picking out letters and coloring your pieces, you wanna stick to color theory when you're first starting out. That way you get a basic understanding of how colors play off of each other. This one, although it looks, it looks like a watermelon, you can play with these a little later on. Do maybe an army green 
and a pastel red, do a bright red with a, you know, a different variation of green. There's all kinds of ways you can mess with your color schemes that will really just make your piece outstanding. <laughs> This is a good example. You know you're getting quality, a great gift if you have this in your black book. This one is actually silk screened and it has been die cut, cut out, looks like by hand with an exacto to fit his tag, which is time consuming. So if you got this in your book or you got this in a sticker trade, a lot of care and time has gone into it. Same thing with this, except it looks like this was done by hand by, with a marker. Not quite a deco because it's not shiny enough. It has a little bit of matte, maybe a one for all or a Posca. But these are extremely well taken care of and a lot of time went into these because of course you have to hand cut them. But it pops really nice on a surface if you were to apply it. So the green of a dumpster, the blue of a mailbox, the silver of a sign, these will pop off, especially the bright. If you know anything about color theory, this here are complementary colors. Shout out to Sabotage for these amazing carved pieces of wax. I think they're soaps because they smell good, but he went through the process of taking the time and carving out all of the details for these. When you're creative like this, it allows you to think of different ways, new and unique ways to apply your mark on stickers to mass produce them but on a local level so what he did was he carved into these pieces of wax his image applied paint over it and then stamped it down so as long as you have the time the patience and the creativity you too can get up like this and this is also a really good example of when you do imprint these onto a sticker die cutting cutting it out that way you have that sole image so when you stick it on the surface it pops out. Here's an excellent gift from our homie Sabotage again. It's a sticker pack with some goodies in it. I can feel it. So this is a throw up of KC. He went, took a United States Postal Priority Mail sticker and he did a throw up in it you might be wondering why he has a tail. Well, when you do die cuts, you make it a little more difficult to peel that back off. So if you're in an area or a situation where you can't really look at the sticker, you're trying to do it kind of cutty style, his brilliance is to leave a little tail so you can peel this off easily without really looking. Super cutty, super tight. are a new product that Art Primo has called Marabou's Marbling. You take a bin of water and you dip a little bit of the ink in, a little bit of the ink in, and then you swirl it around and then you're able to place whatever it is you want to marble in and pull it out. And then you have this aesthetic. Gorgeous. <laughs> friendly uh, bit of advice is you want to make sure that the markers you use don't bleed too drastically. So you can see this one's really tight, it's a throw up, it's got uh, two colors to it, but if you peel the sticker you'll see that there's some bleeding going. So if you use this, this marker in some homie sketchbook you're going to mess up their sketchbook, so keep in mind those markers. But also as this ages it's going to start bleeding into this here. So be cautious of the stickers 
or the markers you use with your stickers because you want to make sure that you keep them as crispy as possible and a faulty marker is your worst enemy. This is a sticker of a piece. Sometimes it's good to get full quality color photos of pieces that you do as a quick way of getting your art out there. It's an excellent way of self-promotion as well and it makes whatever you're sticking on a little bit more colorful and eye-catching. It's one of the quickest ways of getting your art and what you actually really do out there for people to see. I personally really like making up products to sell to people. I'm not sure if this is a real thing that he's uh, selling but I really like how it is uh, death, selling death. So I think it's an exquisite example of you know, making something for consumers uh, by somebody that is a consumer. So this is an excellent, excellent example of one of my favorite things to do, which is, of course, making up products to sell to people. So this is one of the double stickers, as you can see from the back. He stuck it on to make it a bigger surface to drop, sur surface to draw on. This is an excellent thing to have around to spend a lot of time on a sticker like this. He colored it in, he did an outline, you know, he took a lot of time and care on this. If you're at a black book session and you meet somebody and they want you to draw in your book, but you just don't have enough time for quality, this is an excellent gift to give to somebody. You just peel it off and you stick it on a back page. Maybe somebody already drew on the front of it and uh, they want to preserve it, make sure no one draws on the other side so it bleeds through or damages that front page, you take a sticker like this, a quality sticker like this, and you stick it on the back end and it protects both the front and the back page because of its size. So this is an excellent, excellent use of one of these big stickers. These are excellent examples of stickers that you would take bombing with you. If you're walking around the city, you got a few hours to kill between your appointments or just hanging out with friends, you fill up a bunch of these priority mail stickers with throw ups, tags, one strokes. You got a black marker, you got two markers you can do a, you know, illustration quickly on, little tags. Keep these in your back pocket. Quickly take the back off. Maybe keep the sticker on your pant leg as you walk around. Find a perfect spot on the mailbox, on the back of a sign. See it, take it off your pants and just pop. Thanks for watching another episode of The Sticker Trade. If you'd like to send in your stickers, please send them to the sticker trade at P.O. Box 80932, Seattle, Washington, 98108. If you want stickers in return, please make sure you send us a self-addressed envelope. We'll get you stickers. Thanks for watching, friends.